so that's that's where we're headed. You know, where mm -hmm. every every company, every community um, is going to be tapping into blockchain technology to create their own communities. And again, you know, 20 years ago, if you had a website, you know, you were hot stuff. You know, if you right. had a website 20, 20 years ago, you were hot stuff because you had a competitive advantage over your, you know, competitors because you were you had this ability to connect with your customers for on a worldwide, you know, platform. And similar to that, you know, today if you have a tokenized company or if you're if you're creating a tokenized brand, you're hot stuff, you know, because people are looking at that as the future, but soon it's going to become where every company, every business, every person is interacting with blockchain technology and they're not even knowing about it. Right? right. It's just it's just happening um, naturally. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Hey, hey, and welcome back. So today we're discussing all things digital currency. You've likely been hearing all the buzz about blockchain technology, NFT, cryptocurrency, crypt walk currency. Okay, maybe I'm being a little dramatic and extra on the last one, but you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, you've probably been thinking like me, what does this all mean? And what does it mean for my business? Because honestly, that's what I always think. What does this mean for my business? Should I care? And how is this going to help me continue to make an impact? And being that we're all about making sure that you're in the know about what's happening in the business world, we want to make sure that you truly understand what digital currency means, what does it matter for your business, and how is it going to help you on your wealth building journey? So today we've invited the perfect person to break down this topic and industry. Joining us on the show to discuss understanding digital currency and using it to build generational wealth is Vernon J. Vernon is the founder of Equity Coin, which is the first digital token on the blockchain backed by affordable housing. Since 2005, Vernon has dedicated his life to community building through multifamily acquisitions and asset management, facilitating over $180 million worth of real estate transactions around the United States. So amazing. And I also want to mention that last year we highlighted Vernon and Equity Coin for our Black Men Who Lead series because of the great work that he's doing in helping to push forward the equity sharing economy. Now I want to take a moment here to explain why we invited Vernon on the show. My first thoughts were, I don't know anything about this industry. And then my second thoughts were, how can you intersect the two, blockchain and real estate? And finally, I thought when I was doing research, I didn't really see many of us in this space. So I was thinking, this guy is definitely onto something and we have to get him on the show because I know our audience will find value in learning about this. So this episode is definitely a treat because during our conversation, Vernon is truly breaking it down. He's breaking down what blockchain, cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin is and how it all works. He's also going to talk about what security tokens are and how they work. And he's going to provide some tips on how you can create a digital asset and why just having an idea isn't enough for building wealth and so much more. So let's dive in. So Vernon, welcome to the Black to Business podcast. I'm excited to have you here because last year we had the chance to highlight you and the things that you're doing at Equity Coin on the Black to Business Men Who Lead list. And so it's such a pleasure to finally have you here on the show. So welcome. Monique, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm excited to be here and uh, just share my information and my wisdom when it comes to digital currency, blockchain. It's such a new and emerging uh, topic. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that so many people have so many questions. There's a lot of disinformation out there. So I, I'm excited for this for today's conversation. Yes, me too. And speaking of digital currency, so today we're going to talk about understanding digital currency and really how you can use that to build generational wealth and some of the things that you are doing in the community. So before we get started, I like to always ask my guests if you could just briefly share your stories with my listener and share how did you get where you are today? What is it that you do in your business and kind of your background? 
For sure. So Monique, I'm, I'm, my name is Vernon Jay. I am the CEO at Equity Coin. Uh, we are the first digital token that's backed by affordable housing. And I'm, I'm a real estate guy through and through. You know, real estate runs through my veins. It, it's a family business, um, something that uh, my great grandfather bought, you know, our first property in, in the 1950s that we still own today. You know, he bought it at uh, for $10,000 in Brooklyn, in the Cower Garden section of Brooklyn. And on a payment plan <laughs> of mm. all things in, in 1952. And we still own that, that first property today um, that, which is well, you know, worth well over uh, $4 million, but that, yeah. that kind of set the, the foundation for our family. And uh, you know, I've been in the real estate space, specifically multifamily for the past 17 years. Um, I've been blessed to do a little bit under 200 million in transactions as a, as a broker. Wow. Um, so it's, it's been a fun ride for me. And then in 2016, that's when I started to build my own, uh, multifamily portfolio. And then I also, at that same year, I got into blockchain. Um, and, uh, one of my associates told me about, um, blockchain technology and what it's going to mean for the future and how it's the new internet and all these new exciting things. And I just went down the rabbit hole and really learned you know, traveled all over the world from 2016 to 2019, learning about how real estate and blockchain intersect and how blockchain creates more efficiencies in the supply chain and just the overall ecosystem of the real estate sector. And um, it was, you know, it was in 20, uh, 2020, which I started renting out some of my units, some of my available rental units to homeless mm -hmm. families. And uh, the last uh, family that we provided housing for was living in a shelter for three months prior to when we found her, when we gave her uh, one of our units. And she has she had a young son, 10 years old. And when, she, when we handed her the keys, Monique, when we handed her the keys to that apartment, you know, she broke down in the, in the most grateful tears. It, it, never before Aww. that moment. Never, never before that moment did I feel more purposeful and more valuable right. and more uh, fulfilled. Um, so, you know, and in 20, that happened in 2020, um, at mm -hmm. the, pretty much the onset of the, of the pandemic. And I knew that I wanted to have that same feeling a thousand times over. Um, and, you know, I've got the talent to do it. I've got, you know, what I, as far as the, the technical know-how um, and, and also as far as the experience you know, right. I've got that in, in my pocket. The one thing that I that I could use is capital to facilitate, you know, more uh, families getting housing and at the same time creating um, generational wealth for myself and my and my um, and my investors by having contracts with the government, which provide the the uh, guaranteed rent for myself as a landlord. And at the same time, provides necessary, absolutely necessary and dire housing for families coming out of shelters, right? So it's it's a win-win all around. And uh, that's where the birth of Equity Coin came, pretty much came about, um, where I called one of my best friends of nine years, who actually is a cryptographer. You know, I, I got really lucky. He's a cryptographer. He, he understands smart contracts. He under, He's help Venmo and PayPal build out their blockchain system as uh, one of their top ranking employees. And, you know, I, I spoke to him about what I wanted to do and create a token that's backed by affordable housing and, you know, house thousands of families by getting community members involved so that they can own fractions of large multifamily assets and create residual income for themselves. And at the same time, house families who really need housing um, and that's where it came together. And I brought, I built out my, my board of directors, uh, got my, my legal team uh, rocking and rolling and my smart contract uh, developers on deck. And that's, that's pretty much what she wrote, you know, when it comes to that. And um, we our, our goal is to create $1 billion worth of value in black and brown communities uh, by 2030 with the tokenization of real estate. Um, through Equity Coin and our and our plat and our other platform called Equity Share, which I'd love to explain a little bit more uh, in, in later in, in our discussion. 
Yeah, that that was so awesome, and I can just imagine the reaction of that family you were able to assist because, of course, in general, there is a homeless crisis in America right now. But then also being in New York, um, living here, and then you're from here, I can only imagine um, how that made you feel. So, so much kudos to you for that and making a difference. Thank you. You're welcome. And so you mentioned a couple of things. I'm going to go back to them, but let's first start off with the basics. Um, right. Again, this conversation is about understanding digital currency. So let's start off with what's digital currency and how it works. So there's these terms like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and blockchain, and I'm sure I'm missing some, <laughs> more, some more, but as much as you can explain, do explain what it all means. For sure. And I think one of the most important parts of you know understanding blockchain technology and this entire ecosystem is understanding the lexicon, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear blockchain, we hear cryptocurrency, we hear Bitcoin, when you hear security token, when you hear an NFT, they're all different. It's a lot of nuance, you know, in this marketplace. And I think, you know, what people, the mistake that people make is that when they hear blockchain, they automatically think Bitcoin. Right? It's right. an automatic relation, right? And I think that is completely wrong. Um, and it's wrong because blockchain is the underlying technology behind all of these digital assets, right? No matter if it's NFT, a cryptocurrency, a security token, blockchain technology powers it all, right? And what people don't realize is that blockchain technology has been around for decades, Right. This mm -hmm. is not new. Blockchain technology was created in uh, 1991 by two uh, cryptographers who wanted to create a trustless society. So they wanted to create a society in which two parties who do business together, they don't need to trust one another because all of the transactions and all of the data that is pertaining to that kind of transaction can be recorded on the blockchain, where as long as you have an internet connection, as long as you have you know access to the internet, you can always see that transaction and be able to prove that transaction took place and that there are that nobody changed anything in that in that transaction. So mm -hmm. what I like to what I like to think how I like to explain blockchain to like somebody who's never heard about blockchain before is I like to explain it as the internet of accounting. Right. It is simply it is simply an immutable, uncorruptible ledger. So if you've ever done an Excel sheet, you know, which everybody has done an Excel sheet before, mm -hmm. the, the blockchain is pretty much like an Excel sheet, but on steroids. Right. It cannot be changed. It cannot be corrupted. Once once something is uh, is recorded on the blockchain it cannot be taken away. It can't be removed or put back. Um, and I think that that's the basis of blockchain technology. Now, you know, the reason why I think people, uh, people associate blockchain with Bitcoin is because in 2008, there's a, there's a, a person, it could be a group. We we're not really sure, but Satoshi Nakamoto was the person who created person or people who created uh, the Bitcoin white paper in 20, 2008. So mm -hmm. in, 2000, in 2008, I think everybody listening can remember, you know, where they were and how they felt. It was a, it was a shock to the marketplace and a shock to our economic system because the banks and the centralized banks and the mortgage lenders, they went haywire and they, they went, you know, over the ledge and kind of messed up a lot of households financially. Um, and Satoshi Nakamoto wanted to create a, a, a currency, you know, using blockchain technology as the basis so that it, you know, once transactions are, are, are made, they can't be corrupted by a centralized government or a centralized organization or bank. It's mm -hmm. kind of a third party that has no, there, no, organ, no centralized organization has control over Bitcoin, no single organization. And, you know, that was his idea of combating what, what took place in 2008 and providing an alternative for people to place their capital that can be deflationary, where, you know, just to give an example, since COVID started, we've printed more dollars than we have in the past 100 years. 
right? In the last yeah. few years, we've printed more dollars than we had in the last hundred years. So I don't need to be a, you know, a world-class economist to understand the concept of uh, supply and demand. And mm -hmm. the fact that if you print more dollars, it becomes very, very uh, inflationary, right? Which, which is exactly what we're witnessing today, right? right. So, but with, with Bitcoin, it's deflationary, right? There are only a, there's a finite amount of Bitcoin out there and there will never be more. So that scarcity is able to create a deflationary um, uh, environment, you know, on the, on the long-term spectrum. Uh, so just to understand blockchain is the underlying technology with everything, you know, mm -hmm. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and a cryptocurrency, I think is best explained very similar to the Chinese Yuan or the Japanese yen or the American dollar, the US dollar, right? Those are, those are currencies that, um, that are based on uh, pretty much, you know, the environment, the, the uh, collective, like mm -hmm. the collective of people. And the United States government, de it, it determines that Bitcoin is a currency and, and it just got uh, labeled as a commodity as well. Mm. Mainly, be mainly because there is no expectation of return on investment. And I, I know now I'm kind of getting into the weeds of security and exchange commission laws and regulations, but I think it's important for people to understand why cryptocurrencies are labeled cryptocurrency. It's because there is no, there is no, I guess, government or, or organization that um, is able to like tell you that, okay, if you buy Bitcoin, you're going to get a 10% return on investment. There's, you'll never, there's no person, no entity that will promise you that. Same as if you owned the US dollar, the, the American, the US government is not saying if you buy your US dollar, we're, we're going to give you, you know, a 10% return on your investment, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty much what makes it a currency is that there's no expectation of a return, right? Um, but on the, on the flip side, you've got something called a security token. Now a security token is bound by the rules and regulations of the Securities Exchange Commission and is representative or backed by either assets or a company or uh, some sort of you know, uh, organization that, ha that has control and, be and is able to s tell you that you're gonna get a return on your investment. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why equity coin is a security token, because I, I already saw that regulation was coming. Right. And you, you've got to be prepared for it. And for for us, we give a dividend. You know, we give a clear dividend uh, ba based on the income that we get from our real estate income. Uh, mm -hmm. So be because we provide a dividend, we are it is determined by law that we are a security token, not a cryptocurrency. Right. And, um, mm. and, and also you've got NFTs, right? NFTs are pretty much a represent a digital representation um, of ownership of a particular video, a photo, um, a piece of art, piece of, you know, a piece of writing. Um, and it serves as, it serves as a kind of like a copyright system, you know, for the digital age. Um, so, but all of these things, cryptocurrency, uh, NFT, security token, everything is powered by blockchain technology. And I think, you know, what, what, what really got me kind of like stepping back a little bit when I saw that I love Jay-Z, like Jay-Z is my, mm -hmm. like, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, but when he did this, 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 uh, Bitcoin, um, I think it's the Bitcoin, uh, education. I'm not sure exactly, but it, it's, is that the one uh, with the Marcy project? Correct. Correct. Oh, I so, heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called the Bitcoin Academy. Sorry. It's uh -huh. called the Bitcoin Academy. And the reason why this took me back a little bit, because, you know, where it seems like he's putting him and Jack Dorsey are putting emphasis on Bitcoin and kind of like downplaying blockchain. Right. I really believe I really believe that blockchain technology 
and having the ability to apply that technology to different sectors or different industries, that's where the real wealth and value is, right? I think Bitcoin is right now it's disguised as a casino. And I think people should understand what Bitcoin is, but in the hierarchy of what people should know, especially people who are coming from, you know, neighborhoods like where I'm from, you know, or, you know, people need to know about the technology behind it because right. that's, that's extreme. That's exponentially more valuable than, um, you know, than just understanding Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, I think that kind of gives a sense of what blockchain is and the, and the differences in the, in the various, I guess, digital tokens that can be represented on the blockchain. Yeah, that was so, you you know, you really broke it down because I'm learning as people are learning. This is a new world for me as well. But I did see that with uh, Jay-Z and I understood what you meant. And what some of the comments that I saw were that I think also, like you mentioned, I think that educational aspect, that educational piece is very important. And then there were people who were saying, you know, all the extra money that they're getting it's to making sure that they can pay their bills, that they can do certain things to make a daily living. So my question from that is for someone to understand how all of this works is now, how is this in relation to being able to get access to this, um, I guess, this world, whether it's, you know, the exchange for regular money, like how does it all work? Well, so I think, you know, how does it work? Um, it works in that, you know, when you have digital currency, especially, you know, in the environment that we're in today, there are certain legal rules and regulations that have been put in place that are pushing forward this sharing equity economy. And I know I'm kind of jumping to a, another part of the conversation, but I think it's important mm-hmm. okay. to, 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 to put place it here because if, to, if, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, if I told you that you were going to sleep in a stranger's home, you know, and sleep in one of their bedrooms, let's just say, for example, uh, you would think I was nuts, right? But but we have Airbnb right now, right? Where people share their spaces with other people from all over the world. Like this is this is something that's unprecedented that that would not have happened, you know, 15 years ago, but it now it's commonplace. And I think that that was a part of the new sharing equity economy. And then mm-hmm. you also have, you, you know, 15 years ago, you would think I was, I was crazy if I said that you would ride in a stranger's car who does not have a taxi license. Right. right? <laughs> and, and that sharing of your car, you know, your, your, your automobile to be able to drive people, you know, with Uber, they've disrupted the taxi, the taxi commissions. And then I'll, I'll, one more example is Toro, you know, a company mm-hmm. that's, that's literally... Uh, disrupting Hertz and Avis and dollar car rental because now regular people can share their cars, share their resources that they have in order to create an entirely new economy. So I think, you know, with blockchain technology, what's happening is we're seeing the sharing equity economy 2.0 happening where blockchain technology, what it allows people to do, it allows people to bring communities together in a way that you can create your own value, right? Because of your community from within your community. So with, you know, with Equity Coin, we're bringing people in the East New York section of Brooklyn together, you know, in these, in these neighborhoods together so that they can own fractions of large multifamily assets, right? That's, that's the goal. And I think that s- this small concept of what we're doing with Equity Coin is going to, is duplicated in so many in a plethora of ways. You can come together as a community and create your own, you know, farm. You can come together as a community and create your own, you know, indus- industrial warehouse, you know, operation. Right. There, there, there's there's so much that you can do, and then you mix that you mix that with the uh, the Jobs Act, which gives gives people the ability to raise capital from community members and you know being able to do a, a crowdfund of sorts that that mixed with blockchain technology and being able to create your own token that's that's surrounded by a specific idea concept or you know way of life 
this is why I say the sharing equity economy 2.0 is happening in real time right now. So mm-hmm. when you when you ask me when you ask me how does it work and why is this you know why is this so popular and what are people excited about? I think the main thing that people are excited about that people should be excited about is the ability to create value from your community, right? And that's that's what is. Um, that's what is going to be bringing, you know, I think this sharing equity economy to a whole new point because in, you know, in 1991, prior to 1991, it was illegal for a business to own a website, right? Just, mm-hmm. just looking back at, in, in the past, right? It was illegal for a business to own a website because the government needed to figure out how to regulate it first. But, you know, now we look at it today, you know, you know, if you want to create a website today, uh, it's super simple to create a website that can bring people together, right? But 30 years ago, you needed to hire a PHP developer, a um, HTML developer, you know, a database guy, MySQL guy. It, it, was, it was very costly 30 years ago to create a website. But today, you can create a website on Squares, Squarespace, on GoDaddy within a few minutes, Right. So I think right. that's that same concept is what we're seeing in blockchain technology and the tokenization of everything, because for for us to create a token, you know, equity coin for us to create a token, we had to hire a, a lawyer, a, you know, an entire law team. Mm-hmm. We had to, I had to get a whole tech team. I had to get, you know, all of these different pieces in place to work all together. But in the future, what we're going to start to see is that. Um, companies like like what we're building with Equity Share, it's it's a it's taking that concept of tokenization and streamlining it to the point where you can create a comprehensive token that could be representative of your company. It could be representative of your nonprofit organiz- organization. It could be representative of a currency. You know, the, there's so much you can do with tokenization, but the the value I think proposition that we're going to start to see come to light is the ability to um, create comprehensive tokens using automated technology that's based on the parameters of the token that you're looking to create and the type of community that you're looking to create. Um, so that's that's where we're headed. You know, where mm-hmm. every, every company, every community um, is going to be tapping into blockchain technology to create their own communities. And again, you know, 20 years ago, if you had a website, um, you know, you were hot stuff. You know, if you right. had a website 20, 20 years ago, you were hot stuff because you had a competitive advantage over your, you know, competitors because you were you had this ability to connect with your customers for, on a worldwide, you know, platform. And similar to that, you know, today, if you have a tokenized company or if you're, if you're creating a tokenized brand, you're hot stuff, you know, because people are looking at that as the future but soon it's going to become where every company, every business, every person is interacting with blockchain technology and they're not even knowing about it. Right. right. It's just, it's just happening um, naturally. And, you know, again, 30 years ago when you had uh, an internet company, you know, that w- you had an internet company that's laughable today because every company is an internet company. Right. Yes, especially right. COVID made everybody who wasn't online get online. That's right. That's a fact. That's a fact. So now, you know, every company is going to become a blockchain company in the future, and they're not even going to know about it. So it, it's it's something that is here. It's here to stay. Um, and I think people need to really understand the basics um, of blockchain technology in order to apply it to whatever you know passion project or organization that you're building. Mm. I, I I feel it. I was intrigued and you definitely broke it down because now I totally understand. And it's kind of like you said, like we're in the midst of it in real time right now. And for some people who are not on the wave, it's like, oh, that sounds crazy. The same way that people who thought about websites and things sounded crazy. So now they're like, oh, this is the future. This is definitely the future and it's happening right now. Right. Yes. Right. And so and so, Vernon, what does it mean for black the black community, because this is the Black Business Podcast, to understand this industry 
and then also for business owners to be able to understand. For sure. Well, you know, Monique, I, when I go to these events, uh, these blockchain events and, you know, a, across the country, a lot of times I'm the only black person speaking, mm. you know, and, and that happens a lot. And I think what's, what's, it's changing. It's the tide is turning. I think more, more black folks are, are getting involved in it, but I think there's a gatekeeper mentality right now that's happening. And the people who, you know, are at the forefront of blockchain technology, they, they kind of, when I said earlier, earlier on the, on the, on the discussion, they have a lexicon, right? Mm-hmm. They have this, this vernacular that is specific to blockchain that kind of is intimidating to somebody or who, who has not been in the marketplace. Right. So when I, when you talk about security tokens, when you talk about, you know, proof of stake and proof of work and, uh, you know, you talk about these things that can go over people's heads, but they're simple concepts to understand. Right. Mm -hmm. And, And I think that's what frustrates me the most is that it doesn't, it's not a huge hurdle of education to understand this stuff and to, to, to be, I at least have the basic understanding uh, where you can kind of move around the room and, and, and speak to people on a, on a higher level. Um, so what I would say to, to the audience is do not be afraid. And I think it's important that we, that we face, you know, our confusion head on, right? We, we face that confusion by doing our research, by right. lis- listening to podcasts like this, you know, by going to events that you might not know anything about the topic, Right, right. You, you don't know any, so you you, you kind of can feel like an imposter, you know, going into you know these events where you you're not really privy to the information, but that is exactly why we need to be in the room, right? That's right. exactly why we need to be there because we have to learn. Um, and I think you know, similar to to the internet, you know, if you were creating if you were creating a company, um, an internet company that was tackling a real world issue, you know, 30 years ago, and you were building that thing for 30 years, today you are a billionaire, and straight up, you know, mm-hmm. no, no, no doubt about it. If you stuck to your guns and you had, you had a, a, a systemic problem that you were tackling with using the internet, you know, starting in 1991, 1992, there's, there's no telling where you'd be today. So I think same thing with blockchain technology. If you are able to tap into blockchain technology today and you're able to tackle a systemic issue, homelessness, um, you're able to tackle sustainability or, you know, even baby food crisis, crises, right? These are, these are supply, supply chain issues that a lot of it can be, can be solved by, you know, blockchain technology. So my, my uh, advice to the, to the audience is whatever it is that you're passionate about, whatever it is that, that wakes you up out of bed in the morning, understand that blockchain technology most likely can create a more efficiency in that marketplace. And if you can tap into that efficiency early and be able to you know, package that in a way where people can now you know, use it to make their lives easier and make their businesses run in a more efficient way, you know, in the long term, you are going to see exponential growth. You're going to see, you know, gains that you you've you've never dreamed of, um, and it's it it all stems from from being a student of the game and and trying to learn as much as you can, especially this blockchain technology. We need to be in the room in every room for sure. Agreed. And to me, it seems that this is making things and e- making it an equal playing field. Would you agree? I, I would, I would totally agree with that. Um, I would totally agree with that. And, you know, we, we still are dealing with issues like redlining mm-hmm. you know, today. We're still dealing with issues. Um, even though if we apply for a mortgage online, right, even though the people can't, nobody can see you on that online, but we we're fighting against algorithms now, because if you put in a specific zip code that you're looking for a mortgage in that, what, what the information that's going to spew out is information that has been input into the system that tells, you know, the, the system what that zip code means, right? What's the demographic of that zip code? What's the income ratio of that zip code, um, you know, versus some of the more affluent areas in the country? And based on that, 
is how the function, the, the outcome of your application will, will, will look like, right? So I think, you know, by tapping, by having the blockchain technology and being able to circumvent or say, you know what, we're going to, we're going to raise capital for this new building together. And we're, we're going to skip over the bank because the bank has historically kept us in blight and kept us and refused, you know, to provide the funding that we need in order to get to this next level. So I think blockchain is a way to kind of disrupt that entire right. bank, banking system that has kind of kept us at bay, especially especially black and brown, brown folk. Yes, I agree. And I want to talk about the work that you are doing more and the problems that you are solving. So if you could, because you also mentioned earlier um, the way that you all have created this token backed by affordable housing. So kind of explain first um, what the new equity sharing economy means and how does it work? And then about how did you begin to tokenize real estate? For sure. So. You know, I, I did my research first and foremost, and you know, I learned that at any given night, you know, there's 500,000 people, Americans, sleeping on the street mm-hmm. you know, every single night, um, and that's growing. As as of the pandemic, it's been growing rapidly. You know, n- not only that, there's there's a, a um, there's seven million homes, seven million apartments that are needed, affordable housing, affordable apartments that are needed right now in order to facilitate, you know, families who, who are in desperate need of housing. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a specific void in this marketplace. And I knew that, you know, first of all, tackling this, this is not only an endeavor that I, I feel, I feel strong about, but it's something that's absolutely, absolutely needed. Um, so th- that's the first thing that I did is find, find a problem that, that needed to be solved. Right. Second thing that I, second thing that I did was connected with my cryptographer. Right. If you're if you're looking to create a token, you're looking to create any kind of digital asset at this moment in time, it's important that you have a cryptographer who understands smart contracts and smart contracts are are pretty much the basis, I would say, of um, of blockchain, you know, technology as it relates to digital currency and digital assets. Uh, So a smart contract is simply a contract that is all digital. Um, that allows you to place parameters, you know, place specific functions in the smart in the contract. Where, you know, I, I'll just give a, a quick example. You know, if okay. you wanted to, if you know, for Equity Coin smart contract, our smart contract has to be in line with the SEC rules and regulations, as well as Finra and SIPIC. And I'm sure you guys have heard those, you know, those uh, those acronyms that which are the um, regulatory agencies that oversee all of, in, you know, any type of security or any kind of uh, digital asset that is that is backed by anything of value. Um, so that was, you know, the the parameters. I'll give you like a few examples of the parameters that are in our smart contract. Number one is that, you know, if you're doing a crowdfund, it the SEC requires that the person who purchases that share or that token, they need to own that token for one year minimum, and then they can mm-hmm. be able to transfer that token. So in our smart contract, we have a, we have a parameter that's set that says that once we transfer you this token, you cannot transfer this token for at least 365 days. Mm. So in, in that case, I don't have to trust that you are going to be on the up and up and not transfer this token within 365 days. Because if you do do that, then I could be in trouble as the issuer, right? But with blockchain technology, it, it gives me the ability to create this smart contract, which prevents, you know, any nefarious actions, you know, within the smart contract with the token holders. So it protects myself, it protects them as a token holder, and it just provides, you know, a, a rubric, um, and kind of like a guideline as to how our relationship will, will work based on the, you know, the parameters that we set in the smart contract. So that's kind of, that's one example of what is needed. The other, the other aspect that I think is extremely important is the legal team, right? right. Um, there's, there, there's a lot of 
um, regulation that's happening on a daily basis when it comes to, you know, um, stable coins, security tokens, cryptocurrency. And you need an attorney who understands not only crowdfunding, but then they also understand digital currency and digital assets and how the government is regulating that. Um, so when you're, when, if I'm talking to somebody and they're, they're thinking about creating their own token, I would tell them, number one, you know, get your tech together. Make sure you have a cryptographer who understands smart contracts. We are on the Ethereum blockchain. I, I like Ethereum because it's kind of like the, the, uh, the big kahuna. You know, it's, it's, the, comp- it's the, the platform that has the best security um, and it has the most robust developer ecosystem. So if you ever needed to make changes to your smart contract in, in the, with Ethereum, you know that you can find a developer who understands the Ethereum model and who can get that done. So that's first and foremost. Second thing is your legal. Make sure you have a crowdfunding attorney who understands not only you know what it means to have to have a digital asset or digital security, but then also um, you know what that means in terms of the SEC, Finra, and CIPIC. Uh, so those two are important. And I think the third third thing, which is probably the most important, is to have a purpose. You know, yes. you, you want to be doing this for a reason, right? And the reason why we created Equity Coin is to be able to disrupt banks, is to be able to say, you know what, we don't need your money. We, our community can come together and, mm-hmm. and acquire acquire assets without you, right? And we don't need you to own, you know, we don't need your, 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 your financing. And I know it's a radical way of thinking. And I, I spoke to, you know, my, my great aunt about it, and she's in her early 70s. And she, she was blown away because she, in her 70 plus years of living, she never thought about buying a property using anything other than a bank loan. Right. Right. It, it's not even something that has crossed her mind. So, the, you know, me explaining to her that community members can come together, own assets and not have any debt. You know, it's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, unprecedented way of thinking. And that's exactly what what I think, what we need in today's society. We need uh, companies like Equity Coin that are going to hit, you know, hit head first and look to disrupt, um, you know, these organizations and these centralized organizations that have kept our communities in blight. You know, there's mm-hmm. no reason, there's no reason for buildings to be derelict. You know, the only reason a building is derelict is because mm-hmm. the 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 banks and the finance, you know, people who are in that community, they're not providing enough resources or not providing the the ability for somebody who is looking to fix that property up. You know, right. it, it's it's exponentially harder for you to acquire uh, a derelict property in East New York, you know, Brooklyn versus Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. Right? Mm-hmm. The banks the banks will jump all over an abandoned building in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. But they will they will give much worse terms for that same property if you put that same property in East New York, and that's that's where the redlining is taking place, and that's why you know I think companies like Equity Coin are needed to combat that. Um, so I hope I was able to kind of explain you know the different aspects that that are needed to create a tokenized company. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is, you know, so important because it's allowing people. One of the things you mentioned is that to see a need and then take this information and create something that will solve a problem for that need. So this is the way that you can build generational wealth. And like you're saying, you're becoming you're having this first movers advantage, like you're in early. So I really want to define even clearer some of the ways that people can look to build this generational wealth. So one of the ways that you're doing it is through this industry, as well as taking it from the standpoint of real estate. So would you say that it would be focusing on real estate or just being in the blockchain? Well, I think it has to have some underlying purpose Mm -hmm. to it. So it's, it's not like just having an idea is, is not enough. Right. It, it has to it has to affect change in a systemic way. 
right? And and again, I, I love going back to 30 years ago with the internet, right? If there there were so many company internet companies that popped up that were just fly by night and they were just really cool companies, mm-hmm. but cool cool doesn't really cut it when you're talking about longevity, right? So you, you there are a lot of cool projects that are happening with blockchain technology, but you know, cool, cool is not going to house families who are in need of you know who are in desperate need and living on the streets. You know, cool is not going to uh, you know take public waste and turn it into some sort of energy, right? Using blockchain tech, like what what I think is important is that we focus on systemic issues, mm-hmm. right? That I think over, over anything else, that's important because, you know, it's easy to get distracted where, yes. you know, I, I use, I use equity coin and, and our purpose in equity coin, which is to, to house over a thousand homeless families by 2030. That's my North star, right? That's my North star. So, you know, while we were building this, I'll give you an example. While we were building Equity Coin back in you know early 2020, we started to see you know NFTs come in, and you know it, it started to become a, a big buzzword. And a mm-hmm. lot of people, a lot of people jumped on that bandwagon and said, "Hey, you know NFTs? That's what we do now because this is the popular thing. It's the trend." But for for me and for Equity Coin, we you know. We got pitched. People were saying, "Hey, guys, you should, you guys should create your own NFTs, or you guys should create affordable housing in the metaverse, or you know, <laughs> you guys should do all of these things." And even though we hear, you know, the the suggestions and we're open to it, we use our North Star as a way to kind of cut the noise and stay the course as to what we're trying to do. Because this in this industry, like I said, there's so much new things that are happening on a daily basis. It's right. very, very easy to get distracted and to kind of, kind of like start to lean and and move towards something that may not be your true purpose, that may not be your core uh, purpose for for doing what you love to do. Um, so, for anybody listening, I would say stick, find that north star, stick to that north star, and and use the technologies that are that are given to you, you know, and that are being uh, evolving, that are evolving every day to that to that end and do not do not get distracted i love that i love that um cool and cool won't cut it i love it (laughs) so vernon this has been amazing uh you've given us so much knowledge education and step by step i'm pretty sure someone is wondering um how can they even learn more uh what are some of the ways that you would advise them some of the resources that you would advise them to reach out or either uh, seek? Hmm. I I would say, you know, connections are everything in in this industry, right? If if you Mm -hmm. look at, if you go to my LinkedIn, uh, Vernon J, you know, you'll see I'm heavily, I just, I connect with everybody in this space, Mm -hmm. uh, right? Um, And you kind of got to create, find your tribe. And I've been, I've been fortunate enough to find my blockchain tribe in my black blockchain tribe, you know, and I, I see them at different events. We were at consensus in Austin, Texas, which is one of the largest blockchain and cryptocurrency events in the nation. And we were able to come together and showcase our projects and be able to just have our, have our own um, little community, you know, Mm -hmm. and and then we had uh, NFT NYC, which was last week. And I had an event at one of my properties in Clinton Hill, uh, mm-hmm. Where I brought together, you know, fifty people in the in the in the space. I had you know, uh, Web three director at Afrotech. Um, I had uh, the one of the editors at CoinDesk. You know, just people from Galaxy Digital. If you guys know Mike Novogratz, if you're in the in the blockchain space, so I think finding your tribe is absolutely paramount, right? And and don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to. Um, connect with people on LinkedIn or even at events. Uh, I think that trumps any kind of, you know, kind of like third party research you can do because having firsthand conversations with people who are actually doing it, right. <laughs> it's way, it's way different from trying to, trying to Google it, you know, and whatnot, you know, I just give you an example. Um, one of my friends at who is the CEO at, at, over at tribal, 
um, you know, I was able to learn about what he's doing on his platform. And then I was able to teach him about security tokens where he needed to, he need, he really needed that information in order to uh, create one of the tokens that he needed for his platform. Um, so that, that com camaraderie, um, I think is paramount. Yes. Love it. And um, Vernon, what's the future looking like for you, Equity Coin? I know you mentioned Equity Share. If you could just talk about um, just what the future looks like and some of your offers and processes. For sure. Well, we have uh, three communities that we are investing in uh, East New York, Brooklyn, uh, North Miami, uh, and then South Los Angeles. So we, mm -hmm. we've, we're, we're already in East New York and we're going to start expanding into the other two markets uh, fairly shortly. Um, our goal again, again, is to produce one billion dollars worth of value and tokenization of real estate assets uh, and real estate equity by 2030. Um, and the way we're 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 going to do that, we have a specific plan to get that done through a system called Equity Share. So Equity Share, the best way to explain Equity Share is the real is the Coinbase for real estate tokens. So mm -hmm. what 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 we're doing is we're white labeling our smart contract and our legal, political, and tech infrastructure and and offering that to other real estate owners and operators who are looking to create, looking to tokenize their their either their assets or their equity. And they're looking to tap into their community where they can add value into their capital stack for their next project. So if they're looking to do a 70 unit development, mm -hmm. let's say that's gonna that's gonna cost $10 million, and the bank is willing to give them, let's say, two million. They might need a few, a few extra million in order to get the deal done. And this is a way that the community members can come together and start to own uh, portions of that new development. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, this is this is a part of the sharing equity economy. And the sharing equity economy is a comprehensive plan that actually takes takes the concept of sharing equity economy and places it into law. So similar to if you were able to do a affordable housing development in certain communities in New York or Los Angeles, there's something called like a 2080 rule or 7030 rule where the government, the city or the municipality will give you, will give the developer a, a uh, subsidy, a tax subsidy or you know, some sort of subsidy if 20% or 30% of the building is affordable housing, mm -hmm. right? So that, that's something that's in place. But with the sharing equity economy, what we're looking to bring into place with um, Nikki Lucas, who's a New York State Assemblywoman, we're looking to put into place the, the sharing equity economy plan, which gives a subsidy for any developer who provides the ability for community members to come together to own a portion of that large development, wow. right? Because it's it, when when developers come into neighborhoods like East New York or South Los Angeles or North Miami, you know what they give to the community. They throw out a few jobs. They're like, "Here, we'll give you these guys these temporary jobs. You know, one or two years. They'll throw out a few grants. You know, take a few hundred thousand dollars, whatever. But at the end of the day, they never ever provide an opportunity for the community to own equity in that asset, right? And this is, I think that's fundamentally wrong. I don't, I, I think it's fundamentally wrong. And I think mm -hmm. you know, the sharing equity economy plan is a way to kind of create a framework around how this can work because for a developer, you know, this could be a big win for some developers because when developers go into neighborhoods, they have a big problem connecting with the community. Mm -hmm. And, and I think by ha shifting the conversation from, you know, we're coming into your community and we're building this, what do you guys think? It's shifting that and saying, Hey guys, we're looking to come into the community. We want you to own this asset with us so that we can grow the community and, and, and have the community flourish. That's a whole different conversation. Yeah. Right? So, so, you know, that's where we're headed. We're, we're headed on a political, political kind of like journey um, to get the sharing equity economy in, in Congress, in New York State Assembly, and, you know, in, in those halls and in, in those committees um, so that we can not only create the sharing equity economy when it comes to real estate assets, but tap into blockchain technology so that 
developers all across the nation that look like myself who are black and brown can can use this same system to increase their community uh, communities generational wealth building apparatus and systems and you know i'm i'm excited where it's going and and i want to do this for the rest of my life so i'm i'm not going nowhere <laughs> i love it i feel the passion it's just that's so amazing and just i think being in new york and just experiencing that and with the housing and things like that what you are doing is just so amazing and impactful and that is true leadership in our community like so so proud to hear that and i'm so glad we got you on the black to business podcast yes yes, yes. <laughs> so glad so glad for that and amazing so vernon you are doing a lot of work and i want to ask you how do you stay organized are there some of the tools and resources that keep you going in your entrepreneurial journey that you can share with my audience man um organization is is everything right i mean right. having a virtual having a virtual assistant is important is incredibly important and i mm -hmm. I, I actually um i use um, onlinejobs.ph, mm -hmm. um, okay. and you know, I'm sure people would would uh, benefit from using that that website to find uh, virtual workers. Um, and then I also use ba Basecamp as okay. the organizational tool within the corporation within the company. Um, and uh, yeah, I think systems are probably the most important part of our ecosystem of what, what, what we, what we develop. And when I say systems, I mean, you know, we have a system for everything, onboarding talent, um, social media posts. We've right. got, you know, every, everything is, is, is a system where if somebody, if unfortunately we lose, let's say an employee, mm -hmm. um, we can, we can quickly get a new employee and be able to, uh, let them learn about the system quickly instead of them having to, having to kind of learn from experience, they can actually have a rubric on their first day of work that kind of like streamlines a lot of the work that that would take place if, if I didn't have that. Right. Um, so yeah, systems is everything, <laughs> everything. Love it. And we'll be sure to put those resources in the show notes. And Vernon, someone is listening and they're in their first year of business. What advice would you give them? Hmm. The advice is, you know, in my first year in business, and, and this is not my first rodeo, you know, I've, I had a startup um, in my early 20s as well that I sold. Mm -hmm. um, but in both instances, you know, the first year is all about team building. Um, and because, you know, you're, you're really nothing without your team. Right. right? There's, you, you, you as a single person can't do everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if you try to do everything, you're, you're going to be in for a rude awakening mentally because it's going to drain you and you're going to feel like you can't go on. You're going to want to quit. So right. I think that th the first year, um, it's, it's important to spend most of your time um, finding the right team members who are, who are going to be, number one, they're long term. They're going to be there long term and they understand the overall uh, vision of what you're looking to build. Um, but also, you know, I, I think it's important for me, and, and this is this, a lot of people don't, don't agree with this. Some people don't agree with this, but I think it's important to bring people on that you knew already, right? And, I, and all of my board members, mm -hmm. my seven board members, we've all been connected at least for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? And, and the, the reason is because if you're looking to create a long-term project or a long-term product, then there's, a, without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, there will be conflict in your organization, whether it's with you and a co-founder or you and an employee or you and so there's going to be conflict. So the best way to, to predict that you'll be able to get over that conflict and be able to move on uh, is being able to, you know, having people on the team that you've already went through conflict with, hmm. right? You've, you've had conflict, you've got over that. Mm -hmm. And you understand how to work through conflict because it, that, that is by far, you know, the most important for me, you don't want to be with, be in, in, in a business relationship with some, with somebody where things get rough for a week and now they want to jump ship, mm -hmm. you know, because it got a little rough. 
So you need people on your team who are willing, ready, willing, and able to go through rough waters. Because if you own a business, rough waters will come. And if you think they won't, you're living in a fantasy world. Right. That's good advice. And, you know, like you said, a lot of people won't agree, but it's also, you know, to each their own. But it it also is saying that it works. There is a way that it works. So I agree. I agree. I love it. Yes, it is. And Vernon, what does it mean to you to be black in business? Man, what it? I think I the the word that I see when I when you just asked me that question was advantage. Mm. Right? I feel like we have a a secret advantage mm-hmm. that that you know, we have a few different advantages. Number one, I think our best advantage is that we're underestimated. Right? Right? You go into a room, I'd re- much rather be underestimated because what you're able to you know, you're able to move in a way where you can get as much information as you as you need and people aren't looking at you as competition. They're not looking mm-hmm. at you as, um, you know, as a threat. So if they're not looking at you as a threat, you can kind of move a little bit more fluid and be able mm-hmm. to, you know, make things happen. So I, I think, you know, having that advantage is one thing. And then also, you know, the advantage of, of, understanding nuance right and mm-hmm. and being able like if i i could be in the hood i could go to the hood any mm-hmm. hood in america i mm-hmm. feel like i could go to the hood because i you know i'm i've been there i've been to the projects i know what i know what it's like and i think that is an advantage to be able to you know to be able to go to locations that you know other people or, or other people that don't look like you would be very uncomfortable mm-hmm. going to where you can feel some sort of comfort, it gives you an, a business advantage because you can go to those neighborhoods and you can create value, right? So, and, you know, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we, have this, we have this uncanny advantage where we, we can speak, we can, we can speak in a professional sense, but then also we can speak in a sense where, you know, street level, Mm-hmm. Right, right. Most people can't do that. People that don't look 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 like us, they can't really do that. It um, sounds forced. Yeah, it sounds forced. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The A-A-V-E. You know? So we've got serious advantages that we've got to just we've got to um, take advantage of. Right, and for sure. Yeah, and there, I, yeah, I, I totally agree uh, with what you're saying, and I think that there's that level of trust uh, with us within our community and also we are you know we persevere so i love it i definitely agree with what you're saying so amazing and people who are listening they are wanting to know how can they connect with you how can they find you and how can they support you so please do share the best way to support is to follow the mission follow our journey Mm -hmm. Um, it's the best way is at equity coin on instagram um and uh also at equity coin Facebook on, on Twitter on um, and uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, go to equitycoin.org and go to the bottom of the page and sign up for our, our white paper. Um, the white paper kind of gives an overall overarching understanding of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that also places you inside of our ecosystem. So you're going to get uh, notifications for different clubhouse events that we do or different um, in-person events that we have, uh, you know, all across the country. So equitycoin.org or at equitycoin on Instagram. And we would love to have you guys uh, as a part of our, uh, our family. Perfect. Well, Vernon, this has been a treat and I truly learned a lot uh, during our conversation. I'm sure people who are listening did as well. I want to just thank you for being on the show, but also thank you for the work that you're doing and being a leader and pushing the culture forward, but also being a disruptor. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Monique, thank you so much for this platform. I think platforms like this are are not only needed, but required in mm-hmm. order for us to get to this next level that, that we see, this next horizon that we're, that we're on this journey. So I want to just thank you uh, for, you know, putting this together. It's, it's not easy. 
Um, mm-hmm. but, it's, it, but it's very necessary. So thank you for that. Wasn't that such a great conversation? And I have to tell you that this was definitely one of those conversations where I learned so much and it honestly really had me thinking. As Vernon said, we're experiencing the future right now. And another takeaway for me was that cool won't cut it. Having an idea is not enough. You have to build something that would affect change systemically. So make sure that you are causing disruption, make sure that you are shaking things up and make sure that you are staying fired up. I want to thank you so much for listening and I hope you found value in this conversation. So be sure to share this episode with a friend who might also find value in it. You can learn more about Vernon and about how you can connect with him, support him and get those resources that he mentioned by visiting blacktobusiness.com forward slash 105. I love you so much and we really appreciate you for tuning in. So we will chat with you next week.